morning everybody it is the next day i ended up doing a bunch of random research last night and editing and so many random things on my computer so didn't really vlog the rest of the night but today i kind of want to continue just like making some zero waste stuff i kind of want to just like hold off on the clutches for a hot minute because i was trying to buy more of those chains last night for like the purses and i just like realized i don't really love those they're a little expensive and i've had quite a few people tell me that they've broken too so i've had to like replace them and so i just want to like find a better solution but i couldn't find any online and i'm actually going to be in la in a couple of weeks to source some fabric for a certain project i am currently working on and i figured i might as well just try to source like chains or straps or whatever there because their fashion district literally has everything so i'm just gonna wait it off for that so i'm just gonna put these on hold for now i might start like continuing them later on in the next couple of weeks but just gonna stop it right there for now because i also just like really want to start on something new and i want to just like show you as many you know little zero waste things as i can in this vlog so i think today we're gonna start some patchwork if you're new around here i made a really really cute patchwork dress that looks like this back in september for new york fashion week and i really love it a lot of you guys loved it and everybody was like are you gonna sell it and it's a one-of-a-kind piece because like those were literally the last scraps of that fabric that i had so it's like literally the only one i was able to make and honestly they are so time consuming to make that it would cost at least over 500 dollars because i think it took me over 10 hours to make it if not maybe more so obviously i don't think that's like a great product to be selling just because it is so expensive not super like attainable for people and i would like to make zero waste things that are a little bit more attainable. I feel like the difficult thing with zero waste is that you would expect it to be less expensive because you don't have any like fabric costs or material costs since you're just using leftovers. But putting together all these smaller pieces is so time consuming and so labor intensive that it ends up adding up anyway and kind of evens out if not actually costs more sometimes than just regular clothing. So kind of sucks but obviously i love experimenting with it and it's a really great way to reduce scraps and textile waste and all the things so today i kind of want to take that concept of like the dress and kind of do more of just like a skirt so it's obviously going to be a little less time consuming than doing like a full-on dress but it still has that effect and hopefully it's something that will turn out well and i can maybe sell so that's what we're hoping for fingers crossed it works out i've had this idea in my head forever and i just haven't had the time to like make it so today i kind of just want to start it there's absolutely no way i'm going to finish it because again that dress took me 10 hours so this is going to take me a long time too even just cutting it out takes forever so you'll see what i mean but i'm going to find some scraps that i want to use and then we'll get started on cutting out some little squares okay so i've decided to start with all of my white scraps that i have from the irene tops which are these tops that i made for the holiday collection so this is all the fabric that is left over from it and these tops honestly i kind of got annoyed with because they Loki used up so much fabric space because the piece itself is like, you know, like the bodice or whatever, and then it has a super long, like, attached kind of strappy thingy to wrap it around and that just caused a lot of like empty space within the fabric of how i could put the pattern pieces together and stuff so i have a lot of like pretty big pieces of scraps like they're not necessarily like small pieces like there are some small ones but a lot of them are just like big so you know there's a lot that we can use here so originally i used a three by three inch square for that one dress i made but i think i'm gonna go for a four by four inch one for this since i do have a lot more like big scraps to be able to cut out so we're gonna just literally start cutting out a bunch of squares that's what we're gonna do let's do it pieces cut out now and I already have a pattern for this skirt it is going to be the same as like the dress that I showed you guys where it's on bias so that it doesn't need like darts or shaping around it obviously because like you can't really do that too well with patchwork so I opted for bias and I think it turned out really cool with the dress that I made so I'm hoping it turns out kind of in that same vibe for this for that dress I initially like searched every single little piece and then put it together because I
because I didn't use a lining for it but I think this time around I'm not gonna serge it and I'm gonna use a lining and that way I don't have to like finish all the inside edges because you won't see them and I think that's gonna save me a lot of time so I'm kind of going for that I roughly laid it out on how many pieces I'm gonna need and it just makes it easier to visualize how many rows I need to be putting together and all so yeah I'm just gonna start sewing away I've been putting all of this together. I have a bunch of rows made, but I put it on top of the pattern piece and I still need like a few extra like squares on some of these to fully cover it up. And then obviously I need to actually put them all together as well, which will probably result in an extra row needed here as well. But this is kind of what it looks like. It is definitely a very labor intensive process, but I think it looks super cool. It is close to 12 now. So I'm going to take a little break and have lunch. And then I actually have a podcast recording at two, which I'm very excited about. It's the first one I'm recording with like my new setup and my new mic and everything so very excited to see how this one goes and have all that going and then after that we'll continue on with this but yeah I'm hungry so I'm gonna eat lunch and I'll catch you guys after so it's a lot later I ended up refilming a part of a different video that I needed to turn in so I will edit that later tonight but I didn't just want to like stop the vlog there and be like okay I gotta go edit like I want to at least like show a little bit more of this whole patchworking process so I think I'm going to continue patchworking a little bit obviously we're not going to finish today but I do kind of want to show you guys when like the rows are all put together as well because it just like comes to life really really cool I also am thinking I might actually top stitch it all too to give it like an extra extra little something because I have a double needle so I can just do like really cool lines all over it which is what I'm thinking so that's a side note but let's continue patchworking this I am so excited to see how this starts coming together <laughs> Okay, so we have our full panel done. As you can tell, I obviously do it on bias so that I have a better kind of like fit and it shapes around the body a little bit better. And I have the pattern under it to make sure it covers the pattern fully now that it's all, you know, pressed. And you can tell that there's like little differences in tones of the white, even though it's the same fabric. And that's because it's on kind of like different grains, which I could have like, you know, tried to match it all up and make sure every piece was facing the same way so that it's all the same like tone. But I kind of like that it has has kind of that two-tone feel it's like the same white but it's like some pieces reflect more than others and that's just like something with shiny fabrics that maybe you don't know if you don't do fashion is that if you cut all your pieces you have to cut them all going the same way like I can't cut like my top piece going like up and down and then like flip it upside down to make it fit the pattern better because you're gonna get this kind of effect where like the pieces shine differently because like the shine like the light reflects it in one way it doesn't reflect the same like both ways if that makes sense so that's why that happens but I personally like the effect of it I think it looks cool and it did, I did the same thing with like the green dress and I just I don't know I like it I think it's like a cool creative like design detail so that's what we got I'm thinking I'm gonna do like the top stitching I think it would look cool just to have like an extra design honestly I didn't match up the seams like as great as I wanted to so I'm kind of debating the top stitching because I'm like is it gonna look good or is it gonna emphasize the fact that I didn't match things up super super perfectly I might just do it anyway we'll see we'll do like maybe a couple rows and see where that gets us. So this is what it looks like now that it's top stitched. I feel like you can just like see the patchwork a lot better and it really defines it a lot more. I know we're losing daylight here so you can't see it as well as you could in natural lighting but I think it looks really really cool and I'm excited to like put this together as a skirt. It is starting to get a little bit later so I'm going to eat dinner and call it a night with sewing. I just have some editing to do for the video that I filmed earlier today so I'm gonna do that. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing some behind the scenes of like zero waste creations and stuff because I 
feel like I just haven't shown that in a very long time because like I said, I just haven't had the time to. So I'm excited to like dive into it again for these next few collections. And yeah, hopefully it inspires you to reuse your scraps and find fun ways to like, you know, make new things. Like there's just so many techniques and things you can experiment with. And I think that's the best way to just like, the easier ways is to just experiment with it. You don't have to like copy anybody's technique or what they do. It's just like figuring out what you want to do and getting creative with it is like the coolest way to go about it. So that is it for today's video. Let me know if you want more behind the scenes of like zero waste stuff. So I don't remember where I left off on this little vlog. I ended up extending it into a two part vlog of the whole zero waste thing because apparently zero waste takes a long time and I didn't want a super long vlog. But anyway, I went ahead and ordered some lining for the skirt because I didn't have any. I thought I did, but I didn't. So it's been uh, like about a week or so at this point and I have some lining. I just cut it out. I'm gonna go ahead and put that one side together and then we're gonna go ahead and attach to the skirt, get the zipper in, which I also already got. And then we will be done, which I'm very excited i'm literally so excited for the skirt i again don't remember how much i've shown you i don't know if i showed you me putting it like together as a skirt like this but i cut it out this is what it looks like i have one side sewn the other one's where the zipper is going so i haven't sewn it yet but i think it's gonna be so cute there's like a cute little like mini skirt moment but it's not actually that short either though like it's not actually like super mini but you know i'm excited I'm gonna sew up this lining and then we'll pin it to the actual thing get it sewn up and hopefully it'll be a quick and smooth and easy process Okay, so I finally finished the skirt. The lining took me a hot minute to figure out. I don't know, I always get really tripped up with lining, but look how cute it is. I am obsessed with it. It actually turned out so nice and like clean looking. I really like it. It's like not see-through whatsoever, which I also really love. And I feel like the patchwork doesn't look super bulky. Like I feel like it looks like it's like its own fabric and it's made that way. I think the only places it feels bulky is kind of like in the sides a little bit. Like I feel like you can kind of I don't know, I might need to like trim down those seams a little bit. But other than that, I think it looks so cute and I am obsessed with it. So yeah, there is that skirt. I feel like patchwork to me used to feel like it had to be like denim or like super crazy prints because that's kind of what you see in like social media the most. But I feel like you can really play with patchwork and kind of just make new textiles. It doesn't have to be this like patchwork looking thing. Like I don't think you would look at my skirt from afar and be like, oh, she definitely patchworked that. Like it kind of just looks like it's part of the design and part of like how it was made if that makes sense so i'm super happy with it i think i'm probably going to be making a lot more of these soon or just like this general textile for my shop because i definitely have a lot of satin scraps that i need to start using up so i'm super happy with how this turned out i hope you guys enjoyed watching this if you did give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more i will see you guys in the next one bye